if you get in trouble at school. Why? Jack. Jack, let me get a photo of you on that bridge. What's happening guys, welcome back to another video. Today is Monday here in New Zealand. I shot my last wedding on Saturday and I've got about three weeks off to my next wedding. So look forward to a whole bunch more YouTube videos coming up this next couple of weeks. Today I've got another lens review for you, more like an initial thoughts, but it's on the Zeiss Batiste 40mm f2 lens. Thanks to the guys at Auckland Camera Centre, they gave it to me for the day to have a play with it, check it out and give you guys my initial thoughts on it. So let's just jump straight into it. I've got some image samples to show you and I'll put the RAWs in the download link. First off, let's just talk about build quality and things like that, just so we can get that out of the way. Now, it's a Batiste lens. It feels exactly the same as the 25, the 85, the 18mm. Uh, there's really no change. It feels just the same. The only difference is that you've got the focus modes here, so you can change the distance. You can change it to lock it into like a certain focal distance. So it's not going all the way there and all the way back, maybe in low light situations or something like that. Other than that, it's still got the display. Um, I haven't taken the sticker off because uh, this lens is brand new and it needs to go back. Uh, but it's weather sealed, just like all the other ones. Um, it also has a 67mm filter thread, which is really nice and handy. I believe all the Zeiss Batiste lenses are 67mm, apart from the 18 which is 77mm. The only way this lens really differs in terms of build is the front element. So I don't know if you guys can see from this camera angle but it has a kind of inwards curve to the front element as opposed to your normal spherical element on the front that's just the new design that they've gone with now one thing I did notice in terms of the build is it is really lightweight and it's really well made but the way that it's designed again if you guys just have a look this gap here where your thumb goes in sorry where your fingers go in it's kind of similar to the 85mm G Master uh, in terms of you know it's quite a fat lens but if you have a look again just have a look at that angle there you can see um, my knuckles touching it there and I do have quite large hands um, nothing sort of abnormal but I do have quite large man hands so um, I'll just chuck the 85 on here just so you guys can see the difference the gap sort of comes out the lens comes out a little bit further first so as you can see uh, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera but it, there's just a the tiniest extra gap in here which allows for my finger not to touch most of the time sometimes it still does if i'm sort of like one handing it and the cameras you know i have to sort of put a bit more angle in there but it doesn't touch generally speaking uh, compared to the 40 mil zeiss lens so that's really just something to keep in mind um, if you do have quite large hands you are going to get a little bit of knuckle rubbing on the uh on the flange there and that could be a little bit uncomfortable and uh, wear out your knuckle after some amount of time maybe you know like I know from experience at a 10 hour wedding that can be quite painful at the end of the day so as you guys know I'm really not a kind of focus chart testing really sort of corner sharpness all that sort of stuff so I did take some just some basic shots of my fence because it does really show sharpness quite well at different apertures so I'll throw those in the raw files as well the very first thing I noticed was the chromatic aberration is terrible <laughs> just like all the other Batiste lenses um, it's kind of on par with the 25mm which is quite bad um, if you have a look at this photo here I just shot it up this is the f2 just shot it up at the trees and just straight out of the camera and you can see the aberration is really really bad I kind of expected it because all the other Batiste lenses have quite bad aberration now in terms of image quality I'm just going to chuck a few samples up here and zoom in while I'm talking you guys can have a look for yourselves these are all unedited images um, I'll put the settings that I used up so you can see the different apertures and things like that. So the thing I noticed at f2 it's quite good where you're focused. Even further out towards the edge of the frame like in this shot of my son here. In terms of focusing it's really fast. It's plenty fast enough for anything that you might want to do. I can't think of any situation where it wouldn't be fast enough. It is a prime lens so it's not as fast as like a 70 to 200 or a 2470. But it, for a prime lens it's definitely quick and reliable. Um, I haven't tested autofocus for video or anything like that yet so I'm not going to comment. 
But once I do that, I'll post up another video on YouTube just showing the video capabilities of this lens. In closing, the initial thoughts for this lens, it's about $2,300 New Zealand. And for me, it's really not something I'd be interested in because it's just kind of in the middle of nowhere. You guys know from watching my previous videos, if you've been following my channel for a while, I shoot most stuff at 24 mil or 35 mil. So, um, you know, for me, that's a portrait lens. That's not right or wrong. It's just my style. And, uh, you know, just personally, 40 mil doesn't do it for me. It's just kind of weird. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Like I'd either want to be at 85 or 50 or right up to 24 or 35 and um, you know I feel like this lens would come in handy if you just wanted a one camera kit to do like family portraits or something the 40 mil with one body I could easily do an entire family shoot you know I had a family shoot this morning and I used my 24 mostly with a couple of shots on my 85 but I could have quite easily done it on the 40 mil just with one body so in that regards it would be great but again for 2300 bucks I'd really be leaning more towards the Zeiss 3514 and just paying an extra couple of hundred dollars to get that lens. I know a lot of guys are gonna have mixed opinions on this YouTube video, but uh, this is just how I feel about it. Download the raw files, let me know if there's anything else you wanna see about this lens before I take it back to the shop. So that's pretty much it from me guys, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe to my channel, I'm gonna do a QA and a video tomorrow and answer all the questions that you asked me in my poll that I created in the community section. So thanks for following along, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys tomorrow.